Welcome to the bee uh, series. In this episode, we're going to focus on stingless bees. Stingless bees are a group of social bees which don't bear a sting. If they don't sting, it doesn't mean that they don't have any mechanism to defend their nest. They do have. There are some specific species who produce some secretion which once it gets in touch with your skin, it burns your skin. In some other species, they can come and bite you. And when they come, they come many foragers biting you and you feel so uncomfortable and it's going to make you to run away. Some can get into your ears, into your nose, into your eyes, into your, your, your hair, putting propolis, and that will make you to run away. Stingless bees are not present in temperate regions. They're only found in tropical and subtropical regions of the world. Some species are found in savanna, semi-arid area. Some species are found in forest uh, area. Some species can even net, nest in homestead where we, we, we live. ICP has been, through its research, documented 38 different species of stingless bees. And these species are different when it comes to body size. The different species also have a different behavior when it comes to nesting. Some species only nest on the ground. And among the species that nest on the ground, you find those who exploit any available cavity under the ground, but they are a species like which we call Plebeina armata, which is completely specific because he, he only exploit uh, cavity which are found in active termite nests. And therefore, we do believe there must be some interaction going on between this termite and this bee species. Most of the species that nest on cavities. These trees are mainly endemic indigenous tree species. And this means that it's really important for us to preserve and to promote our indigenous trees when we do reforestation or afforestation because it contributes to the conservation of the biodiversity of most of our bee species many such as, as stingless bees. Among uh, the 38 species, we can divide them into six genus here in Africa. And five genus are interesting because uh, they produce honey, but the honey production uh, depends from one species to another one. And mostly bigger is the size of the body of the bees and bigger is the colony, more uh, honey uh, they can uh, produce. From some of the data we have been able to produce in Isipe, we have some species like Meliponella bucande he can, who can produce up to 10 kilo of honey in domestication. Each type of hive is related to a specific species of uh, stingless bees. And uh, Isipe has designed them and has, uh, now prom is now promoting them for meliponiculture across Africa. And in Africa, we have been working apart from Kenya. We have been promoting this in Tanzania, in Madagascar, uh, in Zanzibar, uh, in uh, Burundi, in the, the Congo uh, uh, DRC, in Ethiopia, in Cameroon, in Gabon, and uh, in Senegal and in Burkina Faso. We have some wooden hive and some pot hive. The difference is because that some of the species that nest on the ground require a pot hive. When you put them in a the wooden hive, they don't stay for, for, for forever, they completely uh, abscond. It looks just simple, but it's designed in a way that a farmer can easily do his colony division. He can also easily have the honey without damaging uh, the colony. So there's a, also a way that he can even expand chambers in this pot hive. And this is mainly used for two main species that nest on the ground. This wooden hive which you see here is designed for a species that nest on the ground, but which we have found that it does better in a wooden hive compared to a clay pot hive. The other design hive here is for the species that nest either on wall or either uh, in any cavities on trees. The smallest one, this is just to tell to you that these are for the small species in the genus Hypotrigona and Leotrigona. And all these remaining are for these medium body size, big body size species that nest uh, in trees cavities or uh, in wall. So we have those which are compartmented. Hive by compartment we mean that they have a chamber for the brood, they have chamber for honey. And like this one is a no compartmented hive. This means there's no 
honey, brood, everything is still in one chamber. So with this technology, we have been able to, trans to set up different demonstration sites. We have very interesting demonstration site in Zanzibar where we are working with the Department of Forestry and the Ministry of Agriculture. In Kenya, we have very interesting site in Kakamega Forest where you have farmers who have over 100 hives who are able to give you 50, 100 liters of stingless bee uh, honey here uh, uh, in Kenya. The same thing also in Burkina Faso. So we have also uh, like five uh, demonstration sites which are really doing well. And actually, even we are doing that technology transfer now in Taita, Taveta with some of the species. My colleague, Wendy Cassiera, will now bring you to the Meliponari. And there she's going to give you more detail about how to manage a stingless bee Meliponari. For stingless bees, you require very minimal space where you can place a structure to place your hives and a shade because stingless bees require shade to avoid direct sunlight and also rainfall. You can also use metal or any other available material you have, provided you just have a base that can support your hives and also a shade either with polythene or makuti or any available resources. Then you ensure that you put oil on the base of your meliponary and the essence of this oil is to prevent the ants from getting into your colony because ants are a major threat to stingless bee honey. But for those stingless bees that burrow underground, we have come up with a way where we have put them in pots of isipe design and we put them in sand so that they can mimic their natural habitat. And also the ones that are put underground, you ensure there is a shade and they are raised and a plate of oil is also underneath to prevent the ants from attacking the stingless beehive. But the factors you should consider before constructing this is number one, look for a spot where there is less of noise pollution because stingless bees are not really into noise. Number two, you look for a place where there is less of movement to obstruct the flight activities of the bees and not just movement but also any obstruction. As you can see, you put it where it is open, there are no trees next to it or any obstruction like buildings and all that because of their flight path. What you should consider before setting up meliponiary like this one is it should have proper airflow and less of air pollution. If there is vegetation and in return mean continuous flowering of these crops, then your stingless bees will thrive well and they'll produce seasonally. The good thing about these stingless bee species is they are easily portable. As you can see, their hives are small in size and someone can easily source them from one farmer to another. But before doing that, one should ensure that there's continuous flowering in their area and also the weather should be almost similar to where the colony is sourced from. So our next thing will be next nesting these stingless bees into the hives. 